my name is Dan and uh, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, the player controller blueprint and how to replace that with something different. Now this series that I'm doing is about what I call essential blueprints. So these are blueprints which uh, every time you are creating something in Unreal there will be some form of these blueprints uh, uh, involved in what you're doing. Uh, when you've uh, in the previous one, I looked at the level blueprints, and there's always uh, a level that you've got that you're that you're working with, um, and uh, there always is a controller blueprint, at least one of some kind going on. I, I want to pick apart a little bit what the player controller is, and then I'm going to um, show you uh, something that you that you can do with it to kind of demonstrate. Uh, the, the power of it. Um, so, uh, where do I start is a really good question. Uh, the important thing about player controller is what it should be doing is it should be dealing with the controls that the player uh, is pressing or, you know, waving around or whatever it is they're doing, um, and then taking that information and giving it, passing it on to whatever is being controlled. Now, this process is often shortcut and it is in this template, it's shortcut by taking the control directly from the player into the thing that's being controlled. Let's have a quick look at this. Uh, we did did this in a, or I did this in a previous video when I looked at the, the better input system, which is the new enhanced input system. Um, and I, I'm, as I said, I'm in a standard third person uh, template here. And if I zoom in and look in here, um, where it says blueprints, I've got the third person character. and uh, inside the blueprint for the third person character so I'm going to zoom back out and then zoom in actually on that because it gives us a better resolution um, we do a few things so we've set up elsewhere the actual things that create the um, control uh, the, the control events let's not worry about that right now we have to do a thing where we map the, uh, the event uh, the control mapping onto the controller um, and so the way that it's done through the character is it's uh, using this function get controller. So you're grabbing the controller that is being used, and then it. Uh, we'll talk about casts in a minute, um, or maybe not. Uh, it makes sure it's of the right type of play controller, and then it adds that mapping context in, and then from then, these uh, uh, these events can be used. So that's the camera input, the movement input, and the jump input. Uh, that are there. Now, this is being done in this template in a lazy way. Um, and I'll try and explain why. Because the Unreal system, what it expects is that inside something like this, a character, or it may be if you've got a, a vehicle game, you've got a vehicle, or any other kind of thing that might be controlled, that you should provide functions that can be used to control that object. But you shouldn't be dealing with the player input directly. And the reason is because the system they've got set up uh, allows you to have a controller which then gets attached to the object that's being controlled. Um, and why are we doing this in a more complicated way? Well, it deals better with multiplayer gaming. It deals better with the idea of being able to switch what you're controlling. It deals better with the idea of if, you, if you're on online play and uh, a player drops out, just plugging a, an AI controller in there instead. Um, and uh, the, the big versatility comes here that there are actually two types of controllers. There's player controllers and there's AI controllers. And so you can switch out an AI controller or a player controller and use a switch from one to the other, but still use the same player, the same character that's being uh, controlled or car or whatever it is that you've, uh, that you've got. Um, so there's this whole system of using controllers and then the term that's used in Unreal is pawns. Um, and the idea is that a controller, they use the term possesses a pawn. So you attach, basically, a controller to a thing that can be controlled. So as I said, this is done in a, uh, a somewhat lazy way in uh, this, uh, this third-person template because it just puts all the control stuff inside the character, which is not where it ultimately should be. But we're not going to fix this. But what I am going to do is I'm going to show you how we can use 
uh, a different player controller, create our own, and add some functionality in there. So there are um, a couple of things that we need to do to make this uh, make this happen. Um, and uh, we're going to start by creating our own version of a player controller. So I've, I've come back out to the level uh, editor, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to create a Blueprint class, and I'm going to create it of the type player controller. Let's zoom in so you can see that. So this is a player controller. It's an actor responsible for controlling a pawn by uh, used by the player. Um, and we're going to create... Uh, uh, a blueprint class that inherits from the player controller so it has all of the functionality that a player controller provides but we can add extra functionality and that's the important bit and i'm going to call it my controller now at the moment it's got nothing extra in it and that's fine um, but the other thing is at the moment we're still using the uh, standard player controller. So one thing that happens with the most of these essential blueprints is that Unreal provides a standard version because there has to be a version in use. Uh, so when we override it, it doesn't automatically know that this is the one that uh, that the game should use. So we have to tell it. Uh, and the way to do that is we're going to go into, going to click Edit and find the Project Settings. And inside the project settings, on the left-hand side here, let's zoom in, make this a bit bigger, there's a uh, one of these links is Maps and Modes. And this is where we deal with almost all of these essential blueprints, as I call them. Um, and let's not worry about the details of everything else here at the moment. Some of this we'll do in uh, later videos. Uh, but we're going to talk about the selected game mode and the player controller class. So we're not going to worry too much about the rest of the things here. We're going to focus in here on the player controller class. And it says here it's using the standard player controller. If we drop that box down, it'll give us some other options. And there we can find it's, it's automatically found that I have created my own version of a player controller called my controller. We're going to plug that in. Okay. Uh, I'm going to zoom back out and close that. And hopefully, um, everything is exactly as it used to be. Absolutely fine. No problem at all. Okay. Uh, that's because we haven't added any functionality yet. What I'm going to do in order to hopefully demonstrate the use of the player controller is I'm actually going to add another character in. So I'm going to come uh, down here to the blueprints. I'm going to grab the third-person character. So when you actually when you click play normally... Uh, it creates one of these on the fly for you to uh, to control. Uh, but I'm going to create another one. I'm going to make sure we know it's different by down here on the right-hand side. I'm going to change the skeletal mesh edit, um, asset from uh, this Quinn version to the Manny simple, which is the male version. Um, and there we can see we've got a male character that it's the scripting for this is a little bit um um fudgy uh so please don't worry about it so much the other thing that i'm going to do is uh, so this is the my controller i'm opening up the other thing i'm going to do in here is i'm going to be a little bit cheeky and just use the a key press rather than using a proper input action um so i'm gonna look for the e key and we go down to E, and then uh, when we press that, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the other third-person character that's in the scene and jump to it. Uh, so hopefully this is going to work. Um, so we're uh, um, we're going to use. I'm trying to remember the order that I need to do these things in. I'm live coding, so fine. Um, so I'm going to get all. All actors of a class. This is a really useful node which allows you to grab hold of all of the instances of a certain class that are in the level. Um, and we're going to get hold of all of the actors of the, um, uh, it's called the BP third person character. Um, and that gives us an array of uh, the ones that we've got. Uh, actually, what we're wanting to do is to find the one that we're not possessing. So um, the other thing I need to do is I need to get 
uh, controlled pawn, I think that's the name for it, get controlled pawn, there we go. So that's going to get hold of a, a reference to the character that we're currently controlling. It doesn't, at this point, it doesn't know that that is a third person character. So um, the, uh, the blueprint class pawn is higher up in the, uh, the hierarchy of inheritance of the third person character. So at the moment, when we grab that, it doesn't actually understand what a, what precise type of thing it is, but we can make it uh, kind of do a, an internal transformation as to what type of uh, data we're dealing with here. What's called a cast. So we're going to cast to third person uh, BP third person character. So now we're accessing that as the thing that it actually is, which is a third person character. Um, and what we want to do is we want to remove that from this array. So we've not talked about arrays. An array is just a list of the same type of thing that are bound together. Uh, I'm just going to remove, and it says remove item. And so I'm going to get take that one and remove it from the list. So what I'm doing is the list should produce both of the third person characters that are in the world. And I'm removing from it the one we are currently controlling. So the one that's left should be the one that we want to get to. So once we've removed that, we can actually use the same reference here, and it has been altered by that remove um, uh, node. And we're going to just uh, uh, get, uh, it's called get a copy, and it's the zeroth element. So that's the uh, arrays count from zero up as like uh, buildings in the UK. Um, so that should get one. And then we want to uh, possess that pawn. Possess, is that there? Uh, how do you spell it? Possess, there we go. Now I have tried this before, but I might have made errors in this chain of things. So what it should do is find the one that we're not currently controlling and uh, 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 flick it, flick the control so that we're controlling the other one. That is the hope. Uh, so let's put that along with the others and let's play and see what happens. So we've got the third person character, we're walking around, we can jump, we can move the thing, and I'm going to press the E key. And yes, phew, thank goodness for that, it has jumped um, into the other one. So that player controller um, with the E in it is where that functionality is to jump between one pawn and the other. Now we could have lots of different controls going on in the different pawns. Um, so this would be a way of doing something like in Grand Theft Auto where you get into a car and you stop controlling the character, you start controlling the car. This is the sort of thing that you need to be doing. So I hope that gives you a bit of an idea into uh, what's going on in the world of uh, controllers, uh, particularly player controllers. And that's it from me for now.